How's it going everyone? So in today's video what we're essentially going to be doing is covering the LP Rhythm style. So the track we're going to be looking at is the one you'll be hearing now which is Street Knowledge. So we're essentially going to be breaking that track down but we're also going to kind of be discussing some techniques that you can use to kind of create a similar kind of style in that kind of 90s house region. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the first element we have is kind of like the vocals and these are kind of the things in the 90s tracks that to me always kind of make the difference. So a vocal type that's pretty common in the style is of course these like ad-libs. Kind of like these like diva kind of ad-libs. So it's like these kind of ad-libs that are sort of thrown in to kind of spice things up. This one here is basically just an extension of this. So this is the original. Oh, yeah. And basically I've kind of done it a bit differently in stretching it and then putting it into a sampler. But basically what I would have done is I would have warped it and then I would have maybe trimmed it, but I would have more likely just dragged it out. So you can hold, you can hold shift and just drag it once it's warped and then you basically just get this like really kind of warped kind of vocal so you get this like really cool texture which is like almost like a slow up so i've kind of done that so it's over like at least two bars and then i've kind of altered the warp settings within the kind of sampler and played around with a bit got this ad lib I talked about these kind of ad libs a lot in that kind of very first 90s house tutorial I did. I've got this kind of like, kind of like these hip hop vocals, they're really good for this kind of style. I think this kind of one came from a pack called Boo Records, which is kind of like this like DMB kind of sample library. You'll see it's got loads of like vocals. Orgasm. We sold our souls to the man. So it's like loads of like pretty cool vocals, very similar to like Zero G. Basically these kind of like hip hop vocals that just like work really well as like fills. And then the last one you've got is kind of like um, probably like the main vocal of this track. You are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. What it essentially is, you can basically go to acapellas and you can like take the kind of speaking from the start or end of the acapella, like this. A lot of these kind of acapellas might have it. You are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. That's the phrase. You could use those kind of hits. Straight out of Calvin, crazy motherfucker named Ice Cube. From the gang called niggas with attitudes. You probably wouldn't be able to tell from like listening to that straight out of Compton track, unless you're like big into that style where this kind of vocal came from because it came from that kind of interlude at the start. He's not overusing this kind of vocal, but he's kind of put it in, in very ideal places that just work really well. You are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. You are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. So that is basically the vocals. The next section we have is the kind of drums, starting off with this kind of like punchy kind of kick. So I think it's just a kind of 909 sample, which is kind of missing that kind of low end. So I've basically kind of added a slight amount of boost in that low end and drum bus just to slightly beef it up. The kind of next Thing I'm noticing in these styles is this kind of like kick effect. So basically what it is, 
It's these kind of like kick pills, but it's basically a bunch of kicks with reverb on them. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, reverb on a kick? How can you be doing that? But it actually kind of works. It's basically used to kind of add tension. So it's a really cool kind of technique. And I've used a sample in this case, but basically the way I would do it is I'd basically load a kind of reverb onto the kind of kick sample. And then what I would do is EQ it to kind of remove the lows and clean that up. So I've basically taken this kind of sample from, I believe it's like these kind of like vengeance kind of sounds, vengeance, essential club sounds bass drums, reverb and effects kind of kicks. So these kind of like reverb, reverb type kicks are something I'm noticing in a lot of these kind of styles. With the crash as well. They felt so it works really well, and I think it kind of shows the perfect example of kind of pushing the boundaries. We've got the kind of clap, so like really kind of emphasized clap. I've kind of been quite selective over the sounds I use. This this kind of like damp clap, and this kind of like brighter one. So I've added them, and I've essentially layered them. We've got the kind of two and the four pattern with the kind of groove. You'll notice we've got the ones on the two and the four here, but general kind of feeling is I like to basically shift them so they're just before the beat. So in these kind of placements here, I basically encourage you to kind of get creative with this and over time you'll become more confident in how to kind of write these patterns. But essentially kind of doing them just before those kind of beats. You'll see here the kind of double works really well as well. And then kind of bring down the velocity on them so that they're not emphasized as much, but they're still adding to the groove. So we'll play it with a kick. And I've basically just layered that with a snare. Same pattern. And then on the group, it's kind of like reverb plus saturation combo, which can work really well. So I've got that. And then I've got these kind of fillers. So basically like different kind of fill variations. This one is just that kind of standard 16th. And what it's basically got going on is a filter opening up is automation. And I actually learned this trick recently with regards to like the velocity rising. So normally when you're doing velocity, it goes something like this. So instead of having to draw it in, I actually discovered a trick where you can basically go to the pen tool, hold B, go to the first note, you can hold option, and then you can draw this kind of line, which will go up in a smooth kind of slope. So because this is a very long section, I can go all the way to this kind of 15 bar, and I can basically create this like really gentle slope. The next element is of course the kind of hats. So we've got this kind of open hat, which I have layered from a break beat, I believe. So this one is the kind of breakbeat kind of hat, which often comes with some nice kind of artifacts. Saturated with reverb. Closed hat, which is playing this kind of like shuffle kind of effect. Basically this kind of pattern where it's playing off the kind of open hat and a classic drum machine style. So just that kind of driving energy type hat, but the 16th. 
which is a kind of NPC Kabasa kind of style. So obviously you can go by default to these kind of 16th hats, but I'd urge you to get creative when it comes to these kind of 16th patterns with different sounds. So like tambourines, different kind of hat percussion, because you can get some really nice kind of textures that just kind of sit underneath the main hats and kind of help to glue it together. But this hat loop, So it was this kind of like groove layer, which has a bit of percussion in it, but I'm basically utilizing it for more for the kind of hat sounds. You see when I side chain the percussion is ducking. And then smack attack, which is like a transient shaper. I've just kind of dialed down the sustain because I don't want the kind of loops to drown out the rest of the mix. I kind of want them there, filling the space and not overcrowding it. I've basically got this kind of hat loop all together when these are all played. You'll see the difference when this loop isn't there. So got that, got this kind of splash symbol, which I like to use. So basically got this effect, which is kind of simulating the kind of choke effect from our drum machine. Got the crash, which fairly standard, just to kind of probably a 909. Doing that filtering and then I've just added subtle bits of like reverb and delay. So that's essentially the hats. And the final kind of thing is these kind of loops. So what I probably would have done is started with just the one loop. Probably the busiest of the loops, which would be this one. And then what I'd be doing is trying to find stuff that kind of plays off that. So there's a lot of like similar elements, like your kind of claps and snares and that kind of thing. And something you can do if you, you can either kind of cut the loop up or you can do the kind of envelope automation where you take out these kind of main elements to make room for the ones you've done up here. So the first loop is this. Kind of like this percussive one. Then we've got that kind of more intense one. Almost like a break beat. Got that loop. I'll skip ahead. I've got this one. Kind of like a break beat again. They've all got pretty similar rhythms, which means they're less likely to kind of clash. We've then also got just got this kind of percussive kind of conga. I basically added these kind of congas to a drum rack. Something here as well that I've done is I've sidechained the kind of conga to the snare. The reason I've kind of sidechained to these kind of different elements is because I don't want to cut the conga out there. I kind of want to have it go into the next kind of raise. So I basically want them to play and then the volume just to dip when these kind of elements come in. You'll see it kicks in as soon as the snare comes in. So that's kind of why I've done that. I basically got this kind of rhythmic kind of top section, which is mostly loops. And then the kind of final thing is these kind of breaks. I think I've just used different break beats and kind of cut them up in different ways. I've added this kind of hybrid reverb on it just to kind of spice it up and also kind of added a transient shaper. So that is essentially all I have to say on the drums. The next layer we have is this kind of like bass, low end kind of layer. So you've kind of got this kind of main bass, which sounds like this. So this kind of like plucky kind of deep analog type bass. 
and I've layered it with this kind of sub playing pretty much the same pattern. So the actual MIDI for that is fairly straightforward. It's basically the kind of root note of the scale. Playing this kind of da -da -da -da. I don't know really how to describe it like da -da 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 -da. kind of in steps I guess and it's basically working up the scale in terms of the actual bass sound this one's kind of that kind of plucky analog kind of bass I know a lot of people kind of struggle with this but my advice is generally just to kind of skim through presets and find something semi-usable and then basically adjust kind of two to three parameters. The kind of main parameters I'm looking at are the kind of frequency cutoff, the envelopes, and maybe like the decay and sustain. So something I immediately do, and it's one of the first things I do to tweak the sound, is adjust the frequency cutoff. So depending on what kind of bass I want, in this case being that kind of deep analog type bass, I kind of want the frequency to be quite low. So I'll immediately bring the frequency down fairly low. So that's the kind of first thing I do. Then what I'm looking at is sometimes it's the resonance, but for this kind of bass, it's actually more likely to be the kind of envelope. See, no envelope. So basically playing around with the kind of frequency and depth can get you a very long way. And then the next kind of step is kind of adjusting the kind of ADSR envelope. You can play around with all the settings, but I find because I want that kind of like really plucky kind of bass, the decay is the one I'm looking at more. I'm by no means a sound design master, but I find you can get pretty creative and pretty close to those kind of bass sounds just by adjusting those three parameters. Then once we've kind of done that, we can kind of process the taste. I've basically got an EQ kind of rolling off at, at around the kind of 100 mark just because I really want to make space for that kick. And then I've added some saturation and this one here is kind of like a bit of a difference maker. It's yet another example of going against the grain a bit in adding your delay to your low end. Oh my god. What are you doing? It's something I'd be careful of and I'd kind of make sure that the low end is kept free of that kind of delay, but I find adding delay to these kind of bass sounds can be something that's really cool just to help add a bit of groove and movement to your bass. You might want to like filter it maybe. Reverb on kicks, delay on bass, the people are going to come for me. So the next kind of effect is this kind of effect rack. Basically this is a high pass kind of space rack where I've kind of EQ'd out the lows and then I've added reverb and I could also add like some delay. And it's just kind of filtered just because it's the breakdown then. I don't want that low end in that kind of section. And it's also being layered with just a different kind of sound, just a different texture. A lot of these tracks utilize pretty similar patterns, just with loads of different layers with different sounds that complement each other. So I've got this kind of texture. Kind of like this robotic. If I turn it off,
it's kind of bass from the Bluetooth plugin. Kind of sounds very digital. And I basically just added this long kind of effects chain where there's not anything massively fancy going on, but got this kind of filter freak plugin. Which just adds this kind of movement. So that is pretty much the baseline. So the next part we have is this kind of like organ lead. It's a sound that I'm hearing quite a lot in this kind of style from this kind of organ called the CZ. It's just kind of like really distinct sound which just works really well in this style. So basically what you can do is you can kind of search for that kind of raw CZ organ sample and then I basically just kind of like beefed it up with a few effects. Reverb. This one's from Sound Toys. Just like reverb, kind of modulation, drum bass, chorus. Chorus is a kind of big one in this. The actual patterns are, as you'll see, basically the same as the bass. Kind of pretty short. It's kind of like the key kind of takeaway with these patterns, like very stabby. This kind of one is basically just the exact same sound, just an octave up. For that kind of variation I was talking about. So, got those leads. We've got the kind of chords, and I think this is a big part of the kind of 90s house sound is those kind of chords. So just two chords layered. One is an Ableton stock one, and one is just a sample. So the first one is this. So pretty kind of nice sound. Almost gives that kind of vintage, kind of 80s kind of feel, I guess. In this kind of organ. Kind of like the an M1 type organ. Starting with the um, organ one, we've basically just used a kind of Korg M1 sample. I believe this one might actually be direct from our house and garage organ pack. Basically just a kind of nice kind of M1 organ spiced up with kind of your standard effects. So the organ's fairly standard, it's just a sample. The actual kind of chord itself, I've made it using Wavetable. What I normally start off doing is loading a kind of chord plugin, just to kind of help me hear the potential a bit easier. So I basically added a 12th to go up an octave and I've basically gone up seven semitones to create a kind of fifth chord, which is pretty kind of common in this kind of style. So that's kind of the first thing I would do. The next thing I do is basically start off just picking a kind of nice sound. I quite like the kind of vintage and like retro ones. Maybe kind of adjusting the kind of this kind of section here, just to alter the kind of tone. And I basically just add a number one. So just pick another sound, bring the filter down, map it to the kind of matrix, have envelope 2, and just kind of adjust the taste really. And then something I'll do as well is kind of add this kind of unison, which adds this almost chorus effect. And then we add the kind of modulation that I can describe, the reverb, filter it, delay, just the kind of standard effects you'd expect to put on synth and musical elements. So we basically get left with this as our chord. And we've got a string just to add tension, which is just a sample. together oh, yeah, yeah. 
So that is basically the simps. The final kind of element I want to quickly kind of go over, which I think they kind of do pretty well in this style, is the kind of effects. So we've mainly got these kind of effects in the kind of break section, and then we've got these kind of fillers. We've got this riser. We've got this kind of air raid siren, which I hear in this track in particular. A new riser. Basically, like loads of different risers. I've basically added this kind of siren, which is kind of like an air raid siren effect, but you can basically get creative with them. So the kind of main thing here is he's kind of got these kind of effects that are building and then they've kind of got this section where it's kind of stripped out. So all this kind of energy being built up and then stripped away simultaneously just before it drops. The kind of effect that I'm hearing a lot is these kind of like rhythmic scratches, which are pretty unique in terms of like sample choice. They just kind of help to add a certain kind of character to the sound, which I just think is pretty cool. Almost as if the DJ's kind of doing it live. So, risers, scratches, siren type sounds, which I think he's got something slightly different. He's got this kind of high pitch build, but something that kind of does that kind of job. I'm also hearing a lot of these kind of lasers. Then we've got this kind of police siren. So I think this kind of police siren effect is just works so well because of that kind of hip hop kind of vocal. If you kind of know that kind of history, like they'd get in trouble with the police a lot. So I think it just kind of it's kind of clever sampling in that regard. This whole kind of breakdown, I just think is done really well. Um, and I've semi tried to emulate it. I think the fact he's got, what, 32 bars and he's got kind of something new coming in pretty much every eight bars or so just kind of helps to keep that kind of longer section really interesting. And I think it's a really good example of how to do a breakdown and build section well. The effects obviously going to help that. Different layers, effects building up. And then that. So that is basically the effects. So yeah, that's basically going to be it for this one. I hope you found it useful in learning more about that kind of LP rhythm style of sound. I'm going to leave the project down below if you kind of want to dig into the sounds and techniques more for yourself. I'll also ask if you got any value from this, if you can give us a like, subscribe, comment what you want to see next, and I'm going to leave some videos on screen if you wish to carry on watching. But for now, I'll see you next time.